I recently decided to try pushing Kodak's Ektachrome 100 one stop to 200 and combine it with the use of filters just for the fun of it to try and see what results I could get out of this experiment. Part of my motivation was also to bring this modern slide film a step closer to what I've seen from more of the old school slide films such as Kodachrome. So welcome back everyone. Today I just want to do a brief video sharing my results with this roll of Kodak E100 pushed with the use of those filters. Again, this was mainly for fun and to see what would happen as I'd never tried pushing slide film before. As you may know, I did a review on Kodak E100 back when it first came out some time ago and I've been enjoying shooting that film ever since. What I found with it is it tends to have a fairly cool cast, especially if you shoot it in overcast conditions, a neutral color palette, not much saturation or heavy character compared to something like Fujivel VF50, and that it has a slightly better dynamic range than some of those other slide films. So given that knowledge, I decided to load it in my Nikon FE, set the light meter to 200 and use filters such as a Skylight 1A filter and a Hoya 81C warming filter. Now I have to preface all this with saying that of course it doesn't look like Kodachrome, maybe it's not even close in some of your eyes, but to me it did bring it a little bit closer to that look than I've ever been able to achieve. Not that that was my intention when setting out to shoot this roll, but it was something that I noticed in the results. So what pushing the film a stop does is compresses that dynamic range a little bit and darken the shadows especially, and add a little bit of a contrast boost to this otherwise neutral film. Using something like the Skylight 1A filter, which has a slight pinkish tint, warms up those colors and counteracts that slightly green bluish tint that the film tends to have when shooting it normally, at least in my experience. The 81C filter takes that a step further, having a fairly warming effect, which is great when I was shooting the film, especially in overcast conditions. When it was pretty sunny, I probably mainly just used the 1A, but even some of those sunny times I did use the 81C. And as you can see from some of these results, taken outside on a sunny day, the film did definitely take on a, a fairly unique look compared to normal Ektachrome 100, at least in my experience, with especially some shifts to the way the greens rendered, the skin tones, which is what I'm largely interested in, and not to mention the way it changed all the other colors. Now, I know a lot of you might be thinking you can just go ahead and do this sort of stuff in Photoshop or Lightroom, but to me, using things like filters is part of the fun. I enjoy looking at the slides and seeing the effect straight onto the film. I think doing it all in camera affects the way the colors actually render onto the film itself, which is never quite exactly the same in my experience, at least with applying these effects in post. And even if it is, there's a lot more time spent doing it that way, it's not as fun. So I thought I would play around with these filters. What some of these shots also remind me of is the look you get from some of the film simulations on cameras like Fujifilm which have profiles like Classic Chrome, which is actually designed, as far as I think, to emulate the look of films like Kodachrome. Now again, we're probably not gonna be able to ever shoot Kodachrome again, and it's not quite there. You might be better off using emulations, but I think this sort of process with a film made by Kodak being E100 and playing around with this sort of stuff can actually bring things a little bit closer to that result, which is why I'm really keen to see if any of you guys have actually tried this before, or if you go ahead and try this after seeing the video, I would love to see the potential of experimenting with slide film, something that not many people seem to do. In a practical sense, having that extra stop of speed might be nice, not the main reason I did it. Part of the fun of shooting film is playing around with this sort of stuff. It's great to look at the slides. One of the most enjoyable things about shooting film is that sense of experimentation, which is why I encourage you guys to give this a try. Maybe the next time you're shooting slide film, just make sure that the lab you're taking it to has the ability to push process. So I'll definitely be experimenting with this sort of process again in the future. Maybe I'll push the film even further, one another stop to 400, and also play around with the colors that I include in the scenes that I'm shooting to see how I can bring this film even closer to that holy grail look of Kodachrome that many of us wish we could shoot again. I initially wasn't really going to make a video out of this, but I thought I would do it purely just to share this little experiment with you and also to try and get your opinion, especially anyone out there who's more knowledgeable on this stuff, who has pushed a lot of slide film in the past, has any advice on the color shifts you can expect, playing with filters. And if anyone also watches this, goes ahead and tries a similar thing, let me know how your results went. What were your findings? Let me know in the comments. 
uh, share the photos on Instagram or even join the Discord server, which I'll put the information for in the description of this video. So I'll keep things brief and end the video there and say thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of Pushing Film.